Hello, friends and family. We here at Divine are so happy you have joined us this morning to have church with us. Hey, y'all. Get ready for an awesome praise and worship. You don't want to miss it. Tune in. He has the last. 
thank you for what you're doing right here at this moment, God. For those who are viewing online, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Let your presence illuminate their homes, their rooms. Let your angels, hallelujah, take guard over them in the name of Jesus. Father God, we love you on today. Receive our worship. Receive our praise. Let the word come forth, Father God, with power, clarity, and truth. God, we love you. We thank you. We give you all the honor, glory, and praise. Amen. Come on, open up your mouth, sign and shout out to God in here. Come on, hey. Put your hands together.
said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> I heard John say, perfect love casts out all fear. So when you're confident in who you serve, there is no fear. No devil, no demon, no sickness, no plague, no poverty, no insecurity, no anxiety, no curse, no And his power is unmatched. Give God glory in this place. Come on, give him glory. Huh. Come on, yeah. Rock, 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 rock. The light is here. The light is here.
told us in your word, God, that the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to you. Father, you're the king of glory. You're our prince of peace. Our savior. Our comforter. But as God dropped in my spirit on last night, more importantly, God, you call us friends. the best alliances that you can ever have is to be friends with the king. Listen, it's different than being an advisor or someone that's on the king's staff. But as a friend, you have the king's heart. You have his ear. You have his attention. Father, in a world where they're bowing and giving reverence to so many different names and things, we on this morning declare that you are the King of glory, the ruler of our hearts, our Savior. Come on, Zion, will you just lift up and entertain heaven? Engage heaven. Let's bombard heaven with worship. Let this atmosphere become saturated and ooze with his glory. Let his glory resonate and resound in this place. Build and feel. 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 Let your glory. Let your glory. Let your glory come. Let your glory come. Let your glory come. 
to fill you up with what you need. I need strength this morning. I need your joy. I need your love. Just want to be.
When I tell you we did not like each other, how many times you threatened to come beat me up and I was pregnant? But she was talking yesterday about running her mouth and get popped. I was like, yup, that was her. But who, and listen, I haven't seen her in about 15 years. But the beautiful thing is, she now saved and walking in the things of God. I'm now saved, walking in the things of God. The world will want us not to like us, but we let the devil know it don't matter. When you and Jesus on your side, So I got up, 
I went into the office and I prayed. I prayed. Lord, I don't hear you. So I said, oh, I'm going to take the easy way out. I'm going to find an old sermon. Just switch it up a little bit. And I was excited. I found stuff in this tablet from 2014. So I said, okay. Honestly, I was trying to switch the words up. I said, no, can't do it. And all I kept hearing was one word, and the word was compromise. Can you start that timer for me? Yeah, glory. Yeah. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. So when you think of the definition of compromise, to settle a dispute by mutual concession of, to accept standards that are lower than is desirable. And you know, you hear terms that like my way or the highway, you're gonna do things the way I want them to be done. Yeah. Or you hear when you come to compromise, well, you know, that needs to be a give and take type of situation. But truth be told, we don't like to compromise because we think we always right. We think our way is always the best way. But compromising means that you're gonna have to bend to the will of somebody else. And that means sometimes things aren't gonna have to go the way that you want them to go. But when you trust God and knows that he has a greater plan, and if you don't know what that plan, it's hard to trust something or that you can't physically see. And you hear that little still voice that says, just hold on, it's not time yet. But if it don't happen right now, in this situation where, God, you're not working fast enough for me. You know I need this taken care of. You know, don't you see what's going on, God? Why aren't you answering right now? And God's saying, but it's not time. Come on now. But the word tells us about dying daily. But because we're spiritual beings and we reside in an earthly body, it doesn't always align our will of what God's will is. And this is why Philippians says, 12, 1 and 21 says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Yes. So we have to change our mindset, and we have to, you know, Mr. Tamika preached that last Sunday about the power of your mind. Then she talked about how she bought those $100 bills, right? And she was laying them $100 bills all over the place. And I said, God, I do that all the time. I'm always looking for money. I feel like there's an envelope of money in my house somewhere. Maybe someone came and left it. Go ahead. How many people this week ended up getting that financial blessing? I saw them testimonies coming through. Unexpected checks were coming in. She said, it's time to start calling those things into existence. So you have to understand that when you're talking about dying to this, it's not that you're losing out on anything. God said you're going to gain some things. And you have to focus on what are the things. You know, even yesterday, we're at a celebration of life. It didn't matter if Mother Betty had a million dollars in the bank. When it was time for her to go, she went. She was cremated. They didn't take that million dollars. and We wouldn't have let them if she did. But they didn't take no million dollars and cremate it with her. But we're so focused on this life. And we're so focused on what makes us feel good right now. And a lot of times we compromise who we've been called to be to satisfy our flesh. But what's interesting about the word compromise is that it's one word, but it can have two completely different meanings and outcomes. So when I think of a marriage, compromise is key to success to a marriage. How many, oh listen, some of us have been divorced because we didn't know how to compromise. I got married. Like, I got married before, mm -mm, didn't work out. And a lot of times, because we just don't know how to compromise. But see, on the other side, you can look at the same word and compromise to our relationship and with our relationship with Christ means something completely different. When we compromise, we are choosing to live below the standards set by God. People compromise when they make concessions and accommodations that are less than godly behavior. Basically, excuses why they cannot live the life that God called them to live. My God. My okay, God. Okay, hold on. Uh, that's real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to hit you with it. <laughs> but we make excuses. I have too much going on. I can't make it to church. 
I'm so stressed, I need to smoke or I need a drink. We have all these reasons of why we can't live according to who God called us to be. But what you have to understand is the devil's always going to present what you perceive to be the perfect excuse not to do what God has called you to do. But see, if we can hear from the enemy so clearly, I'm going to ask you, what station are you tuned into? See, if I'm listening to the radio and something comes on that I don't want to hear, I switch the station. But we're acting like it's 1950 and there's only one or two sections, um, stations on and that's all we have, that we have no choice. And what we do is we entertain those things that are being deposited into us, not tapping into the power that we have and that God has given to us. But what I'm saying is, the devil's that you're never going to arrive. You're never going to get to a, pl a place that the devil's not going to speak to you. And that's the problem. We think we got so holy and we got so righteous that nothing can go. Oh, I'm too holy for that. Nothing can come into my dwelling. That's when you normally get an uppercut and you get knocked out because you think you're too high in a podium to know that you got to wake up and you got to die every day. You got to wake up and declare who you are and the things of God. It's like when you're about to go into a fight, they don't go into the ring like, well, I don't know if you're going to win. Who was that big fight that just happened? Um, was it Holyfield and... No, Tyson and who? Tyson and, uh, Roy Jones. Roy, Roy Jones. Yeah. <laughs> now everybody thought, it turned out to be a draw, right? But everybody thought Roy wasn't going to make it happen. But I'm sure all of Roy's people were hyping him up. They weren't telling him, well, I don't know if you're going to walk out of this. We may have an ambulance waiting for you because, you know, Mike Tyson, he'd be biting people's ears and he'd be just knocking people out. You know, I don't know if you got a chance. No, he had people around him saying, you could do this. You could win. It didn't matter how big the enemy looked on the other side. You got to know you're always going to have a David and Goliath experience going on. There's always going to be a Goliath. There's going to be something that seems so much greater. But Mr. Tamika told us last week, you can tell that mountain to move and it shall move. But what truly is in your heart and your mind and what is coming out of your mouth? But what we do is we make excuses that it's too hard to serve the Lord. And, you know, it's too hard not to compromise. And then some of us think that we're bold. Some of us are bold enough to think that we're doing God a favor by serving him. Like, all right, I guess I could give you my time. I guess, you know, if you, if you really need me to do this, I, I guess I will. We should do me fair. There's a little white bag in there. Yeah, give me this. Thank you. Sister Rachel. No, I, I just want to. Come on, you come. I have something for you. Come on, on, I have something for you. Do you like it? No, I'm just saying. Do you like it? I have, I have something for you. You do like. Is it pretty? Are you happy? I'm uh, giving it to you. You know why she's acting like this? This is hers. Why should she be excited about me giving something to her that's already hers? Why are you acting like you giving God a favor by giving your life back to him when you've been destined to live for him and according to his purpose? Yet we think that God is jumping up doing cartwheels because now you decide to walk in the ministry that he called you to do. God said, I'm, I'm waiting for you to button up and start walking. He said, how many times do we have to keep going back and forth, tug of war? One day you're up, one day you're down. One day you want to serve me, one day you don't. All because it's so easy to compromise with the world. Yes, the world is around us. The world is telling us the complete opposite. But when are you going to man up and woman up to do and be exactly who God called you to be? But see, even in the Bible, there's so many examples of people that compromise. And I love seeing that because those people in the word of God showing us, it didn't matter if Noah built an ark. He still did some mess. It didn't matter that Eve was created by God. She still did some mess. So that's why you have to know. You have to be on your P's and Q's at all times. But, you know, you look at Peter. Now, he's somebody that walked with Christ. Now, sometimes you're like, well, it's hard for me to serve God because, you know, I can't really see him. And I'm not sure if I feel him. But, see, this is somebody who walked with Christ. He saw miracles that were going on. He sat with Christ at the Last Supper. And he was forewarned that he would deny Christ, that he would compromise. And what did he say? Oh, never me. Not me, Lord. I would never do that. 
How many times you said, not me, Lord. I would never do that. I ain't going to walk away and do those things that I've been delivered for. Or how many times we look down on those around us for doing those things. And God said, I'm just trying to give you a reminder. And you're supposed to pray and lift them up. He said, that's why some of those people, let me tell you, people say all the time, we have a lot of people with issues here. I said, well, thank you, Jesus. Because we all got issues. That's why we're here to fellowship together. Because see, when I'm up and you're down, I can lift you up. When I'm down and you up, you can lift me up. See, that's what people that have been through some stuff, that's why there's power and worth behind your testimony. You should never be ashamed from what God delivered you from. You should be excited. Look at Bishop's cousin yesterday when he got up. They ran the streets with him. They robbed with him. They stole from him. They beat up people. Or you're going to compromise and not fast because you're like, 
like, I don't want to deal with that. But I'm trying to be like Demiah. I need a breakthrough. I need God to bring it. I'm not satisfied where I am right now. I'm trying to get to a next level higher. Because see, the higher you get, the altitude changes. And you got to make some adjustments. The problem is, some of you try to raise up, but you haven't changed how that altitude. You can't breathe a certain way when you're at a certain altitude. You start to get nosebleeds if you haven't set yourself up properly at that altitude. Some of you went up there, you felt like you were about to pass when God raised you up. Because God said, no, you can't eat the way you were eating before. You can't not go, you can't hang out with that crowd the way you were before. And all of a sudden, you start to come down. And then you try to rise up again. Listen, you get in seasick because you up, you down, you up and down. You don't know which way is which. The devil got you so twisted and confused. You ever stood, I don't know why we didn't, listen, when we were kids, we didn't have video games and stuff. You made up games. It was like, stand here, and we just keep spinning you around, and then walk away and see what happens. <laughs> and then, you know, the dramatic cousins will fall out on the floor. You're like, come on now. But honestly, that's what the enemy does. He tries to spin us and spin us and spin us like a top, and then he walks away. And like, what's left? But I want to close with this. I want to show you a little bit of what compromise looks like. Caesar, come on up here for me. Mr. Trace, can you slide that up the way for me? Oh, thank you. Can you help Caesar move this table over? That table.
in front of us for our lives. And we get excited because it looks good. See, God knows what you like. And he prepares for See, like Bishop was making fun of me. I don't like sweet potato pie. What? I like pumpkin pie. But see, see, the Lord wouldn't lay that before Bishop because that's not what he likes. God is going to give you exactly what you like. But what we do is he lays it before us. And it looks so good. And it looks so appetizing. And God says, son, daughter, I just want you to eat. And what's great is, you know, how many times you ate and like 15 minutes later, you're still hungry. You're like, what happened? I, I got the teenagers, yeah. And the thing is, we ate till we're full, but it feels like we're still hungry. And the great thing about when it comes to the things of Christ that you will never be to a point that you're still hungry. When he fills you, he continues to fill you up and to fill you up. But then as the Lord lays all this, we make these poor decisions. And we say, okay, God. Wait, hold on. I'm going to put a little extra on there for you. Just a little bit. No, it ain't messed up because this is what we do to God. Mm -hmm. We figure that, well, God, it's just a little sin. It's not going to mess up the whole plate of what you're giving me. It, it's, just, it's just a little. And then when we come to church and we feel convicted, we try to dust some of it off. And we try to, listen, that's why sometimes I don't like eating at people's house because they may drop food on the floor and they look, nobody look and they try to put it back. But that's what we do to God. We figure we just come to church and we just going to dust it off. See, the difference of getting delivered is when you give it to God. And see, when you're truly delivered, God said, no, no, son, daughter, I, I love you so much. I'll give you something brand new. But when you're trying to cover stuff up and then before you know it, there's just more, just more, just more. And then one day you wake up and you can't even see what it was supposed to be like anymore. Wow. Because it's so tainted. It's so tainted. Jesus. Who would eat this? Yeah, we say, when we come to church on Sunday, Lord, this is our praise. No, that's a song. Lord, I'm giving this to you. I want to give this to a homeless person on the street. Would you go to a king and say, here? Yeah, we have compromised. We have conditioned ourselves to believe that this is okay. And I'm telling you, it is time to get it right. It is time to eat the fruit of the land. And God says, there's so much, you can slide that, just slide it over, that I have for you. It hurts me when spiritually I see people doing that because I see what God has for you. And if it hurts me, I can only imagine how God feels and what it's doing to him. So what I want us to do is just bow your heads, close your eyes, and if you're saying, Lord, I saw myself in that situation, and Father, I am sorry. I am sorry that I've compromised. I'm sorry that I haven't fulfilled what you've called and what you've asked me to do. Father, I ask you to forgive me. Lord, everything, every gift that I give back to you, Father God, I want you to be proud. I want, as they sung on today, Father God, I want to be your friend. Lord Jesus, I know that your attributes are holiness, righteousness. Lord, I want you to look down and smile on my life. And I ask, Lord Jesus, all those things that are hindering me, that are keeping me, take them away. But Father, don't just take it away. Father, I'm asking you to take my desire and my taste for those things away. Whether it's certain people in my life, Father God, just take them out of my life. Make me strong enough. Make me bold enough to stand up to some of those things that have constantly been pulling me back. Father, I don't want to live that life anymore. Father, I don't want to carry on that pain anymore that continues to take my mindset and has me make these poor decisions. Father God, just cleanse my mind. I'm praying, standing on your word that talks about having a renewing of my mind. And not today, Father God. I'm trying to get away from that stinking thinking. Father, 
Father God, I want to be in your glory. I want to rest at your feet. Father God, I want to be at a place where there's shelter. Father, I know that I have to die to this flesh every day. And I want to be a living sacrifice unto you. And Lord Jesus, I love how you call us back to you with no condemnation. How you stand there with open arms and saying, come on. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for you to make that decision. So Father, we thank you for wiping away every tear that we've shed. And for giving us the comfort and the peace. I just feel that even on today, someone just feels like their heart has literally been broken. And God said, that's okay because I'm the potter. You're like the clay and I'm just going to put it all back together. And it's going to be better than it ever was before. Because you've given it to me, I will do what I'm destined to do for your life. And Father, we ask these things in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's give God some glory. Amen. Brother Stephen, some of your sister lives a microphone. She's about to come up for a moment. Someone get bring a microphone. Hallelujah. If you would like to give to our ministry, here below are the different ways you can give. Let's not forget our $20 seat for our bishop. Stay tuned. Or you're not walking in the place that God has called. And you know that's nothing to be ashamed of. And you are among family. Or you may say, you know what, I need to renew my commitment with God. I just want you to stand right where you are. And once again, do not be ashamed because God said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Anyone else? Or even if you're at home, we want to make sure we're praying for you. But I know that God is tugging at at least two more of you this morning on yes. your heart. I feel it, I yes. feel it, I feel it. And God said, it's okay. It's okay. You're saying, God, but we've had this conversation before, and I know you're tired of us having this conversation. God said, but it's okay. This time may be different. Make a stand for what is right. God said you're never going to get that deliverance You're never going to get that true freedom and peace If you do not make this stand And God said you know what If you can't stand here You can't stand out there You're not going to be able to fight those things That are going on out there If you're not even comfortable to make a decision here Bishop can you pray Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you for everything that was said and done on this morning, oh God. Father, we just thank you, oh God, for touching every, each and every one, oh God, that is here on today, oh God, and even those at home, oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, for a renewing of the mind to take place, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father, thank you for those, oh God, who just openly confessed you as Lord and Savior of their lives, oh God. For you said that we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouth that, that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he suffered, bled, and died for the sins of the world and rose from the dead on the third day. That we are saved. For it's not with, with the heart that one believes and with the mouth that one makes confession. Ah. Oh Father, we pray that you have your way in each and every one of our lives, oh God. Give us a fresh and a new start, oh God. For you said forget those things which are behind and press it towards what's ahead. Father, we pray, oh God. Oh. 
that you would give us a fire, oh God, a desire, oh God, to serve you, oh God, in the capacity in which you call us in, oh God, without compromise. Let us be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Father, we thank you and we praise you and we give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray.
what we needed to do. So thank you and for also being a support to them. Fasting starts tomorrow. Now that should be a surprise. We've been talking about this. You ready, Mother Linda? Oh, I thought you jumped for the fasting. So we didn't say what you have to fast from. That's between you and God. Because guess what? What I'm trusting God for is real different than some of you others. Thank you. 